Hi, y'all. I'm Bree. I'm Tyler. Hello, I'm Devontae. All right, so I'm going to refer back to the document we all created like a few weeks back um, on just like the things we posted. Um, so I'm looking at that right now. Yep. Okay. And I will start off talking about his early life. You probably already heard some of these things, of course, but for the sake of the video, um, Herman Branson was um, an African-American physicist and he was born on August 14th in 1914 in Pocahontas, Virginia. Um, he also received his bachelor's of science in physics at the Virginia State College. And he became the first person of color to receive his PhD in physics. And um, he focused on crystallography. I don't really know how to say it. But um, yeah, he was the first African American to focus on that um, in 1939 at the University of Cincinnati. Okay. Nice. Um, so what I kind of think wanted to contribute was the uh, studies that they did. And the first and like most um, important study that contributed to the study of genetics that Branson was a part of was uh, understanding the structure of like helical proteins. Um, they just by utilizing protein structure and understands and that use that to understand the function and characteristics of the protein. That paper was published in 1951. Word. Um, and using his background in crystallography, he discerned the molecular shape of the protein and focused on his knowledge of physics and bond angles to understand the structure. So um, that's what I'm gonna be mostly focusing on in the timeline and, and kind of include information about how uh, they were able to predict the residual residual structures or the amount of like uh, protein proteins per turn kind of um, I'll have like my script or whatever ready by that time to understand what we are going to be talking about um, also something they also found out during that study was the how the stability of our helical structure uh, depends almost solely on the interactions between adjacent resi residuals mm -hmm. which are like each um, piece of the polypeptide okay. so that's mostly what i'll be talking about in that part of the presentation for our herman branson and then he also contributed to sickle cell anemia research he kind of was like uh, part of the initiation for this research and helped publish or actually solely published many papers that examined the protein structure and again, how it correlated to like the phenotypic results of the red blood cells. Um, kind of, I kind of like generally skimmed the papers, but it said mostly that uh, there was greater mobility of the albumin of sickle cells, so kind of the contents um, within the bloodstream. Right. And how that attributed to a larger number and how the structure of, sorry, and how the structure of the protein that was being produced uh, attributed to a larger number of negative charges on the albumin molecule Okay. So I think that has a major influence and in those kinds of um, results had major influence on how they were able to determine what kind of effects that sickle cell anemia had on a person's bloodstream. Right. So I'll kind of be talking about that during our presentation of Branson Ooh. and Branson. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that like we should all incorporate that I guess in our final presentation we could all say like something on the lines like we could go in depth of his research I guess because you know students may ask like oh what did he study on sickle cell anemia so I guess we can talk about um um 
his research with Sikhs on Anemia because only people really know him about uh, just the co-founder of the Helix structures. Yeah. So that's really cool. I really like that. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, Devante. So for me, um, so what I wanted to input into the timeline that I found really important was as a scientist, he left behind his legacy at black colleges. So one important thing that I want to um, point out is his, he was the co-founder of the Equal Opportunity Program, which it helped young African-Americans who were trying, who were looking for higher education in different fields of science. And he was able to get federal funding for, um, federal funding for these kids. Um, so I wanted to mention that he was a champion of educational equity. So he was actually able to, um, which is funny, convince President Richard Nixon, like himself, to increase federal aid for black colleges in the early 70s. Oh, so that was what- I know that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm in EOP, um, hey. which is funny. Yeah, so it was cool to actually, you know, know somebody who started this for us. Um, wow. Another, another key point that I, I found was he actually helped um, Dr. Marie Maynard Daly. Um, he helped her get into chemistry. Um, she was the first Black American woman in the United States to earn her PhD. So she made important contributions to chemistry of histones, um, protein synthesis, uh, relationships between cholesterol and hypertension. So that was pretty cool. And then outside of his uh, research, um, he was, he actually helped students. He was a teacher. Uh, he, was, he was a teacher at Howard, and then he left to become the president of Central State University in Wil Wilberforce, Ohio. And he did the same thing in um, Pennsylvania's Lincoln University before he retired. So I thought it was just important for us to include in the timeline what he did um, after, like things that he helped contribute within his community and people of color. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. I'm glad we all touched up on different things. So I guess in a timeline, I could do like his early life stages. Um, Tyler, you can do his research and you got a good, you know, grasp on that. And Devante, you can do his like contributions and his afterlife. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. All three of those things are definitely crucial parts of uh, this man's career and history and yeah. contribution to you know, Yeah, I don't know about genetics. you guys. I I generally found the same information for him, like on the internet. Like yeah. there wasn't a lot, so I feel like these three points are kind of like they they touch base throughout his life. So I don't think we need to really include anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I found like literally the same things, and I found like also about his sickle cell anemia, but I couldn't actually find the actual paper that he wrote for it. So I I didn't know if I wanted to talk about it or not because I mean I said like yeah he you know. He started doing research on like sickle cell anemia, but I couldn't find his actual paper, so I didn't like expand in it. But I actually found the paper. Um, let me see. His name was on there with a whole bunch of other scientists. I don't know where I put that. Yeah, didn't his didn't he not get credit credited as well? I was kind of confused on that. Oh yeah. When, he, um, he didn't get credit for um. He didn't get credit for um, co-founding uh, the structures at first. The structures, right? Okay. Like they, but he did. He got a Nobel Peace Prize or a Nobel Prize for something. I think okay. it was. I wrote uh, it in the outline, but I know for a fact he didn't yeah. get credit, like because I wrote that for, like the controversies for my outline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he was definitely undercredited. I definitely remember that because yeah. like Paul Lining. Um, and the other man had got um, full credit for it, basically. Mm -hmm. And he was like a like very like good for this because um, he was a person who like came in and actually like proved that the structures right. could be possible. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely contribute. Also, his contributions uh, after his all his uh, research studies was a major part of like his contributions, you know, like what Devante was saying. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at my slides now. Yeah. Yeah, I got like Paul Lining, um, and the other man did yeah, not. Yeah, it was it was it was Linus Pauling and his assistant. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. They didn't give him like credit at first, and he like wrote them. He wrote them back because they wrote him like mm -hmm. prove this or whatever, and he wrote them back and was like, like no, like they mm -hmm. didn't give me credit for it. Like, why should I continue to help y'all? Which I thought, like that kind of um, goes back to him helping people of his of his background. Like people back then, they used to take your work, and they it would be their word over yours, be just because of the uh, color of your skin. And it was really hard for like scientists who who are you know people of color and minority. Right. But that's cool. He definitely helped us out a lot. Yeah, he didn't give up. He just kept you know. He kept so, doing more research too. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the major points mm -hmm. did you guys want to talk about anything else I'm good I think that can um, make up most of what we can publish into the master timeline and stuff like that our contribution yeah. to the overall yeah yeah because you know we already made the document last week we met up together before this even was an assignment yeah <laughs> yeah we did that document so that was good we did the document it gave us like a head start mm -hmm. so we, um gather up our thoughts from the document and then post them in the master timeline and we know each other check section that we're gonna go over so yeah make sure you guys put your i think your initials after too because i was looking at it people had initials under it and there's a lot of info so right. around okay so is that all for today? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm good. Okay. Good time? Uh, yep. All right, awesome. It was nice talking to you. Yep, nice talking to you. You guys have a good night. You too. All right.